Aloha everyone, it's Brandon, and I'm looking forward to taking you on a nice leisurely stroll down Kalakaua Avenue. I'm going to point out the hotels, restaurants, and points of interest. Hopefully you'll learn something new about this amazing place. If I have done a video on a specific place, I'll put it up on the top of the screen if you want to dig deeper into it. It's a beautiful breezy August day around 11 o'clock in the morning, and this is the end of Kalakaua Avenue that has the zoo in the beginning of Kapiolani Park. You have the Park Shore Hotel and Lulu's on the right. And right here, this is the statue on the left. It's called Makua and Kila. It's based on the children's story written by Fred Van Dyke named Makua Lives on the Beach. The story is about a boy who befriends a Hawaiian monk seal and they become surfing friends. Cool story. Kalakaua Avenue is named after King David Kalakaua who reigned from 1874 to 1891. Huge supporter of Native Hawaiian civil rights and worked diligently to restore Hawaiian culture, traditions, and practices that had been suppressed. This included the revival of the hula, which had been banned by Christian missionaries. He commissioned the Hawaii Ponoi the national anthem of the Kingdom of Hawaii and many many other accomplishments. Right there is a Twin Fin Hotel owned by Highgate which also owns Alohilani just down the road a bit. A big renovation. The popular Tiki's Bar and Grill is located there. You can see the red umbrellas. A fun place. If you want to know the surf and weather conditions you can visit their website and they have a live webcam up on the top of that building shooting right out to Waikiki Beach see the beautiful weather and what to expect for the day or if it's uh, cold wherever you're at you can enjoy some sunshine. These beaky bikes are all over Waikiki available to rent, rent you. Just buy a bank of minutes and you can use it over a period of time. This little structure right here you can just walk up any time of day and rent a surfboard. Surf on it, lay on it, put it next to you on the beach it's all good. And this right here is the Waikiki Beach Marriott Resort and Spa. Amazing renovated pool deck up there. Uh, they got all kinds of water fountains and, and fun things. Also have Kuhio Beach Grill is in there, which has a killer breakfast buffet. Up ahead on the right is the St. Augustine by the Sea Catholic Church. Some interesting history on that place. I don't have enough time to go into it, but it is available online. Coming up ahead here on the left is the statue of Prince Kohio. Kohio was often called Kealii Makaainana, which means the Prince of the People. He is well known for his efforts to preserve and strengthen the Hawaiian people. And there's also a road that runs parallel to Kalakaua, named after him. I did a separate walkthrough video. There he is there on Kohio Avenue. Beautiful life-size statue there. As you walk down Kalakaua, you come across a lot of these water features. A funny little story, I was walking down here about a week ago, it was extra hot. There was a lady holding a leash for her small dog who was just plopped in the water, cooling off. She was patiently waiting with a smile. Right there in front of me is the corner of the Alohilani Hotel, a great boutique hotel. Giant aquariums in there. You can watch directly from the lobby. You don't have to be a guest. You can just walk in. Cool little taco and tequila bar in there. Really well done. Used to be the Pacific Beach Hotel. This little spot here along the left opens up later in the morning, not too early. Yeah, coffee in there, acai bowls. Can't beat that view, that's for sure. 
Inside the Alohilani is Momo-san, great ramen and sake place, and Morimoto Asia. Morimoto is up on the second floor, a nice little view of the ocean from there. Iron Chef fame. Momo-san is one of the best local mokos that I've tried in Waikiki. There's a McDonald's there, if you must. Some interesting items on the McDonald's menu. Rice. Not sure if they're still doing Simon, but you can get spam with the breakfast platter. And if you're looking for one of those pineapple or coconut drinks, or drinks in a pineapple or coconut, right along the left here, right there is a spot that you can go to and just hang out on the bench or head out to the water and enjoy it. This is the famous Circle Hotel. They have the eggs and things down on the ground floor. And that building right there is just kind of nondescript, looks like a condo. That's a spacio, espacio. It's a luxury room. They start around $2,000 and up. A little outside my price range. It's a beautiful banyan tree. I'm going to point out a couple of banyan trees along the walk just because everything that happened in Lahaina as we watch that banyan tree hopefully show signs of life and come back. It just makes me appreciate some of the beautiful trees along this avenue as well. Right there, that giant tower there is one of the towers of the Hyatt Regency Waikiki. This is the end you'd come to to Valet or when you arrive to check in. Whether you're staying there or not, heading to the lobby, they have a two-story waterfall in there. Some beautiful landscaping, great place to just walk around and enjoy the layout. Up ahead here on the left, we're gonna come across the famous Duke Kahanamoku statue. In addition to winning five Olympic medals, three gold and two silver, he also served as sheriff of Honolulu for 13 terms. He has a postal stamp made in his honor and is considered the father of modern surfing. There it is, legend. Really just a beautiful day here in Waikiki. Right up ahead here is these two low buildings. One is the Honolulu Police Substation and the other is a bathroom and a little uh, place you can get snacks. But right in front of it is a, a place that's fenced off that I want to talk to you a little bit about. These are the stones, are the living legacy of four powerful healers from Tahiti. It's a great story, great legend. A great way to learn about the importance of this place and, and these healers once resided near this place I rarely see people taking the time to stop and read the plaque so I encourage you to do so the history of this place even in Waikiki is unique and the stories here are important to learn remember and to pass on this is the police substation if you see these people walking around with these bright yellow shirts just like these guys they're part of the Ambassadors of Aloha, and they will assist you as best they can with any questions you may have. I used to have my surfboard down here in the surfboard rack, which was right in this space here. It was burned down under suspicious circumstances. Not sure if they ever found out a great spot to launch for the day. Along the left here is Lawson Station. I haven't tried them, but I've heard they've got some good frozen uh, treats uh, in there. If you have, I think they, I think they do a, something similar like a Dole Whip. But on a hot day like today, uh, something cold and frosty is always nice. Yeah, right in there, Lawson Station. And right across the street is the Princess Kaiwalani. I think it's one of the best value locations this close to the water. Great place, a lot of aloha in there. On the left is the famous Moana Surfrider, known for its colonial architecture, which you can see throughout there. It's the first hotel built in Waikiki 
opened its doors on March 11th, 1901. Go into the lobby, walk around. There's another uh, famous banyan tree on the other side. Go in the evening at night, it's lit up, it's beautiful. Go up the wooden stairs when you go in there to the left and there's some historical displays on the second floor that is open to anyone whether you're a guest or not. Definitely, definitely go in there and look around if you get a chance. If you're tired, you can enjoy one of the famous wooden rocking chairs out front. Just past that main entrance is another entrance into the Moana Surfrider. This goes up to the tower. During my visit, I stayed there in the tower. Some killer views of Leahi Diamond Head and down to Waikiki. It's good to see the brides and grooms are back in Waikiki. So many businesses revolve around uh, this industry. Right here on the left, this is the Outrigger Waikiki Beach Resort. The Blue Note is in here. Dukes and Hula Grill. Great views as well. Right across the street, International Marketplace. Another place with lots of good places to eat. The parking access is from Kohio on the other side. If you remember the old International Marketplace, there's a strip of huts along the beachcomber. It's not the same, but it brings back some of the feels for sure. I'll point it out as we get there a little bit further uh, down the road here. Up ahead on the left is the Cheesecake, cheesecake Factory, which is huge. Uh, I think you need a, a map just to walk around that restaurant. It's also the beginning of the Royal Hawaiian Shopping Center. If you get here and it's a long wait, just walk into the Royal Hawaiian Center a bit, go up to the third floor and they have a little food plaza up top. I've never been there when it's been busy, so if you're hungry, it's another option. That tower there right above those blue umbrellas, if you go up, that is the Outrigger Waikiki Beachcomber. And that entrance is just to the left of those blue umbrellas. There's a lane there, it's called the Duke's Lane, and it goes through to Kohio. And they have that old style marketplace carts in there. So if you want to experience a little bit of the old style, you can follow it through there. Yep, we've got an Apple store gadgets you could want. That building there across the street on the right, kind of kitty corner to what I have, that has the Styx Asia underneath. It's about 17 different restaurants. Really cool place for sushi, all kinds of noodles. I recommend you check it out if you get a chance. I'm gonna go left here a little bit into the Royal Hawaiian Shopping Center area. This area is where they have a lot of shows and live performances. I'm pretty sure almost all of them are free. Some nice seating further in the back. And you can also access the back side of the Royal Hawaiian Hotel through here. Great area to hang out and have some shave ice. Let the kids run around. Some additional information in there. If you see that red sign across the street there, that's the Styx Asia that I was talking about that I mentioned. You actually go down underneath that building place down in there. recommend you check it out. Up on the second, maybe the third floor here, you see that white sign with the green circle. That's Tim Ho Wan Dim Sum. Great dim sum place in Waikiki. 
They have a location, I believe, in Hong Kong that's Michelin star rated. I could be wrong on that one. This intersection coming up here is Kalakaua and Royal Hawaiian. If you go left down Royal Hawaiian and down a bit, you will be at the entrance or the drop-off area of the Sheraton Waikiki and the Royal Hawaiian Hotels. Stated place, both great places uh, for sure, great location. The building across from me there uh, on the corner is the newly renovated DFS building. Lots of high-end shops in there. It's carpeted and it's has nice cold AC throughout. Definitely go in there and check it out. Some nice design elements in there. Right here on the left is the Hermes. This is their flagship location. Three floors. I think it's 13,000 square feet. They've got private salon shopping in there. A cafe for coffee and tea. So you can relax while shopping. That's the entrance there of the new DFS. You can just walk right in and check out the shopping in that area. Beautifully done. This next intersection that we're coming up on is uh, Lures. If you head down to the left, you'll come across Beachwalk Plaza. Not to be confused with Beachwalk, which is at the next intersection. At the end of Lures, you'll find the Halikulani and Outrigger Reef. Lots of restaurants down there, some shopping. Pretty cool place. Definitely uh, take a walk down there if you want. So you can see some of the high-end shops are slowly coming back, especially after COVID. You got Christian Dior here. And a little bit further down is Luxury Row, I believe, which is right outside the Ritz-Carlton Waikiki. So this area just past the shops uh, is, there's a little bit of history here to uncover. It's a place called Hello Moa. It looks like it's just a landscaped grassy area, but it's indeed a park once home to nearly 10,000 trees. It was used by King Kamehameha the Great as a camp during his conquest of Oahu starting back in 1795. King Kamehameha V had his residence here and several sporting artifacts were discovered in this area during the construction of the Royal Hawaiian Hotel. It's right here in the middle middle of Waikiki. This is it right here on the left. You'll see just kind of a grassy area. It, it kind of just looks like, you know, sidewalk landscaping. There is a placard there. Looks like a surfboard. I'm going to walk by it here. So a lot of history all over the place here. So I encourage you to uh, take the time. This road off to the left, on the front to the left, this is Beach Walk. You'll find the Hard Rock Cafe, Tommy Bahamas. There's some new restaurants down this way as well, so don't be afraid to walk down there. Those towers right above the, uh, those low-rise buildings, those two towers there, that's the Ritz-Carlton Waikiki residences. There's uh, Dina DeLuca in there, Artisan Loft, La Vie. And I believe Sushi Show is in there. Great sushi restaurant. The number of hotels on this end drops off, so the foot traffic, as you can tell, is a lot less as well. place here sells vitamins or something. Let me know if you've been there. As we head down here, uh, you'll see the old Nike building getting redone up there with the crane. That's going to have some Marriott timeshares on the top floor. If you 
you follow this road down, you'll get to Fort de Russie Beach Park down there. The museum is down there as well. And we come across another beautiful tree along the walk. Quite large. I love the root systems that come down and drop down on it. Really well done. Nice park area here. Some tennis courts in the back. The post office is right down this road as well. We need to get to that. The Marriott timeshares are going to be on the top of this building on the right. And first two floors will be shops and office spaces. Along the left here is the Brothers in Valor Memorial honoring the World War II veterans of the 100th Infantry Battalion separate, the 442nd Regiment Combat Team, all commonly known as Go For Broke, the Military Intelligence Service, and the 1399th Engineer Construction Battalion. Most of those units were comprised primarily Japanese Americans in World War II. Great stories in there. Definitely something to check out. And this building here across the street, this is Hotel La Croix, enter from Cohio Avenue actually. You can see this end of Kalakaua is much quieter, a lot less foot traffic. With that new building going up, and the renovation of the Ambassador of Waikiki, which is just past the park here on the right. We may see this end get a bit busier. This spot here on the left has been vacant. I believe it's just being used for parking right now. As we get near the end, you can see the statue of King David Kalakaua, which greets everyone as they come into Waikiki. It's where I started the Kohio walking tour I did recently. Just walk over and there's some plaques there with some information. I enjoyed sharing this walk with you and I plan to do other locations on Oahu and the Outer Islands. If I don't see you out walking, maybe I'll see you in the lobby. Thank you.